Oh, look, we got somebody inside the thing coming out today. Oh, somebody walked out of it today. What up, babies? How y'all doing today? I mean, there's some eggs in there. I'm about to go in there and get them. It's the first time I've seen somebody walk out of there. Oh, yeah. Let's get them some snacks. You gonna jump for me today, baby? You gonna jump? Jump, jump, jump! Yeah, there we go. How y'all doing today? Yep. She jump for me every day now, don't she? Let's get y'all some snacks. Oh, yeah. What we got here? and let them work for it all day. And that's what they do. All right, let's get them some food and some water. Get their water squared away now. Now let's get their food squared away. What up, babies? Are oh, their food still good? I don't need to keep dropping food in there. All right. Now, let me check the eggs. Oh, I see one already. I think we got three again. What you think? What I tell you? Three again. There's one, there's two, and there's three. So, 18 eggs this week, 18 eggs. Three eggs a day, at least. I do have 18 eggs right now. And last week, I gave away 18 eggs as well. So it looks like I can give away about 18 eggs a week. What up, babies? That's good. Three ducks, 18 eggs, they productive. Very productive. And that's my babies right there. They doing good. So, now that we got them squared away, let's get out on this walk. What up, baby? How you doing? Yep. What's up? Uh, plug y'all back up. some water fresh water how that feel good <laughs> yep so today I just took this bucket and filled it up and then carried it back and that's how I carried the water because this bucket carries holds more water than that bucket and it's lighter than that bucket the cord and the heater element and the rubber makes that bucket heavier and this bucket carries more, so it's just easier to carry this bucket back and forth and just empty that one out. So that's what we did today. And look at them, they doing good. All right, Sean, let's get out on this walk. Well, I dropped one, so not 18 no more. We got 17. Look at that. Oh, and that one had two yolks in it. You see that? There it is. That was twins. Two yolks, one egg. Yep, good thing we dropped that one, huh? So you have to see that.
Oh, yeah. Hey, good morning, guys. Eh? Good morning, Shaw. Another beautiful morning. Oh, yeah. Hey, it's a little colder than normal today. I mean, in the past couple days, I can say they're normal because it is December. So it's a little warmer than normal, in my opinion, for December. Hey, the creek is flowing good. Hey, these rocks are just slippery enough, too. Yep. It's in the 30s, so it could be some ice out here. Could be a little bit. Hey, it feels good out here, though. It feels very good. I'm getting over my stuffiness. Hey, I ain't gonna lie. I feel like this is going away quick. Like I said, I try my best never to let anything just sit. And, oh, I'll get over it. Nope. I've been using the heck out that neck patch trying to keep my nose clean. And it's working. And then I went skating last night. Hey, that opened my nose up good. Hey, skating was... Skating was different last night. Well, one... Well, no, it was, it was still amazing. It just didn't seem as full last night. But... I'm saying I like that though because that means more room. Have to worry about hitting somebody or somebody hitting me less. Yep. But last night, it was a lot of good skaters on the floor last night. And I feel like I'm starting to finally like connect with everybody at the at the skating ring. Like people knowing my name, I'm starting to know their names. And last night, a couple of the guys who skate like me, hey, we got on the middle of the floor. And started showing out. I thought that was pretty cool. I ain't never, I ain't done nothing like that since I was a teenager. Really. And what I'm saying is, it's because, I mean, every time I would come home or leave, I would do stuff like that with the people who I remember, but they don't come to the skating ring probably no more. And they daggone show ain't skating like they was back then. Not trying to be funny. But that's what happens when you let it go. And you ain't, it ain't the love of your life no more. It ain't the same. And back in the day, the people who I used to, I guess, I ain't gonna say, it ain't, a, it ain't a competition to me. It's just to get out there and do what you do. Cause everybody be doing things different. It ain't like, here, I'm gonna do this and you do this. It's everybody get out there and do what you're comfortable with doing in the middle of the floor. But it brings a show to people who are like novice at the, at the sport. Is that right? Like newcomers? They see what can be done, and then they make people want to do That's what I do. And I love when I hear people tell me they're going to try and step it up on the floor today. And I get that all the time. I know that sounds crazy, but people who come in be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to be skating like you one day. And what I'm saying is, then when I see them on a regular basis, I'm like, yep, you sure will. If you keep working at it, anything is possible. And what I'm saying is, then I see people who be just talking and then you never see them again. Or you see them once every, every six months. It's like, no, you won't. <laughs> you won't ever skate like me. I love what I do. And so I do it and it ain't a chore to me. Same way with cutting hair. Like yesterday, whew, I feel like every head that got in my chair, I laid them out point blank yep and I guess what I'm saying is now I feel like even in the barbershop I done found my rhythm oh my goodness my rhythm is starting to set in and I'm noticing when I want to get the job done we get done in 30 minutes we can but what I'm saying is when you feel like you can get done in 30 minutes what happened when you just put a little bit more work in? See, when I was in barber school, I learned a valuable lesson from one of the students in the school. His name was Catman. That's what we called him. Catman. He was a little bit older cat. And he said, hey, man, you nice. He said, he said, just wait. You're going to be so much better. I said, what? You know, I came from a world where I felt like before I went to barber school, I was already cutting hair. This was nothing new to me. 
I've been cutting since I was 10 years old. But what I realized was when I went to barber school, uh, yeah, I didn't know how to cut. I just knew how to work until I got the result that I wanted. And what I'm saying is, I feel like that's still what I do today. I work until I get the result that I want. But the difference now and then, a whole lot of time has passed and I got a whole lot more experience. So now when I want to get to that result, it's a whole lot easier. I, I guess I say I've been cutting all my life, but I haven't been cutting for real. I have been cutting whenever given the opportunity to cut. There's a difference. Whenever the opportunity presented itself, I was always prepared. Yep. But I had no control over when the opportunity presented itself. Now, I have complete control over when the opportunity presents itself. And it makes it so much easier for me to show up prepared now because I have a place set up to where I cut hair. Back in the day, even when I worked in a shop and I wasn't supposed to, I had to evacuate every day, not leave no evidence that I was there. <laughs> yep, what I'm saying is that was wrong. And if I would have got caught, ooh, I would have paid a hefty price. And I'm saying, I'm saying in a shop, yeah. And when I went on deployments, I don't feel like, I don't feel like on a deployment, that's nothing wrong. Nah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What I'm saying is I felt like I was much better prepared and much better trained than the TCNs that they had brought. Oh my goodness. Them guys, they like, heck, I'm only making a dollar a day no matter how much you pay. <laughs> so I don't care what your haircut look like. It's like great clips in, in reverse. Oh man, but the good thing about the desert is you get a bad haircut, you really ain't got nowhere to take that boy to show it off anyway, so don't make no difference. <laughs> yep, that's what made a guy like me so valuable in the desert. Oh yeah, if you wanted to feel like you was back home just for a little bit, <laughs> yeah, I'd break out them clippers in a heartbeat. Next thing you know, I'm sitting in the trailer for a restroom with a line outside the door talking about who next who want more that's how i was able to save money when i was in deployments yep don't spend nothing and then make something now i'm saying i couldn't do that on every deployment nope hey some deployments i barely could cut my own hair <laughs> but i'm saying my job was work with generators whenever I got around one. Oh, baby, I had the power. Huh. Maybe that's why I feel the way I do. Because even in the military, it was kind of like, hold on. I know, I know your rank. But you do realize you need me right now, right? Before you go yelling at me, let me have some time to think. <laughs> I didn't create this problem. I'm here to fix it. <laughs> we need this generator back up and running now. Look, you yelling at me ain't going to make me get it done no faster. But you wonder why a person gets good at working under pressure. Because what I'm saying is, even though somebody's yelling at you who feels super important in the moment, hey, work still got to get done. Yep. You wonder where stuff like that comes from, huh? Hey, that's a good thing, though. Learn how to work under pressure. Oh, man, I tell you, nowadays, I don't feel much pressure. Not at all. I'm saying now, everybody who get in my chair talk nice to me, son. Because <laughs> they know they want to look nice when I'm done. Hey, give me a hard time if you want to. Uh, get that cape up off you so quick. Nah, I'm just playing. Don't nobody do that to me. They know what they there for. What I'm saying is I feel like the people who I get in my chair, it's like I'm there for repair more than just their hair. I'm saying, boy... They finally sitting in the chair of somebody who cared. Let's be fair. When I did all that and I didn't even use a swear. Oh my goodness. Come sit in my chair. We'll find the you, real you. He's hidden in there. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yo. I love bringing confidence out of people. 
Yeah, they don't be knowing this in there. And then they see it. And what I'm saying is, I see people's attitude change just from my haircuts. And I ain't trying to be funny. I'm saying when somebody first sit in my chair, I see how they come in and they have this battered person syndrome where they show me nothing but pictures of how their world has been jacked up all their life. And it's like, as soon as they meet me, they go from the ugly duckling to the swan. <laughs> and guess what, y'all? That first haircut, they would be like, oh my Lord, I could, I'm telling you, I could have spent 15 minutes on that haircut and been better off than what they were in every picture that they showed me. Yep. And they'd be amazed at how their hair could possibly look. How could my hair look like this? I'm like, hey, somebody just got to take some time and show you, you know, hey, what I'm saying is a diamond don't look like a diamond until somebody put some work in and polish that up. What I'm saying is somebody got to dig that boy out the earth first. I mean, you just getting it when it's on your ring. <laughs> it's a lot of work put into that thing. <laughs> yep. And the person who's at the finish line, he's the one saying cha-ching. Yep. You see how that worked? Cashing in on it. Hey, all I'm saying is... <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. I'm out here having a ball. That's all I'm saying. Your boy want it all. And I'm getting to the... Oh, that's a dog. And we had last call. I don't see nobody with it. That boy running off now. He better quit. Ooh. Check my underwear. I might have shaved. <laughs> oh, my goodness. No, I didn't. <sighs> hey, that dog just ran off. They ain't barking nothing. They don't know each other. Never seen you before. Hey, I'll worry about that when I be out here. Yeah. Came up on him. Don't know where he went, but I know he went in the right direction. Would not be smooth for him to come back now. I'm expecting you. You should have used your advantage when you had it. But it looked like the problem is you never had it. <laughs> you got the nose, buddy. You should have known I was there. I smell good. Yep. You got the eyes, buddy. You should have seen me coming. Uh -huh. But you didn't. I was even talking. Uh, but this water covered my voice, I think. Oh, yeah. That dog never saw me coming. <laughs> hey, so I was telling y'all, though. Six months later, that person who's sitting in my chair. Six months later. That person then got used to my cuts by now. Oh yeah, and they used to going somewhere and getting a compliment by now, like they expecting that now. They hold demeanor and change. It's like, it's like going out and buying a new car. Now you know every time you walk out with that haircut, tell me if I'm lying. Let one of my clients tell me. What I'm saying is I got one client told me his wife got so mad at him because they went to the mall and he got more compliments than her. Oh my goodness. I be telling dudes, when they first in my chair, I tell them straight up, I'm like, look, my haircuts come with side effects. They're like, what? I'm like, look, in some cases, especially if you're married, nine months later. <laughs> hey, what I'm saying is one of my clients came in last night. You think I'm lying? What I'm saying is this man's whole life didn't change sitting in my chair. He went from, I got a baby on the way to now I'm a proud papa of two weeks. Hey, he came in last night. Hey, congratulations, buddy. What I'm saying is that man's so proud. And I'm sitting here wanting to hear all the stories. And he like, hey, I wish I could stay in talk shop, but I got to get back home to the, <laughs> to the wife and kid. They need me. <laughs> I'm like, hey, get back to it, buddy. He was so proud. Hey, I'm so happy for him, too. But that's what I'm saying. I tell people, my haircuts come with side effects. What I'm saying is, <laughs> hey, <laughs> I don't want to make too many jokes out this way, but I'm sitting here thinking, look, ladies and all y'all that's listening to Kevin's segments, what I'm saying is, look for my haircuts out and about. <laughs> if y'all want to see good men, I'm telling you, look for my haircuts. 
my haircuts is almost like a stamp of approval. <laughs> Especially if it's a regular thing on their head. I'm saying, they taking care of their responsibilities. Oh my goodness. I am so happy. I'm serious. I got people. I can't talk about everything because look, what I'm saying is my clients also expect me to keep my mouth shut. They know anybody could be listening. <laughs> hey, ain't none of my clients listening. Uh, I'm just playing. What I'm saying is, hey, I'd be happy when my clients bring me good news. This is what we work towards. This is what we work towards. Yep. Always making life better and doing what we need to do. Yeah, that man is doing his thing. Proud of him. Hey, what I'm saying is, all y'all have heard me say, I got clients getting married. I got clients buying houses. Hey, my clients going in the right direction. Oh, yeah. And I'm saying, what they say, iron sharpen iron. Yes. I'm telling y'all, these things are a fact. The people you surround yourself around, hey, what I'm saying is, you sit in my chair too much, you're going to get this on a regular. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And they know it. Hey, but what I'm saying is, also, when it's time for me to settle down and get that work done, hey, it will get quiet. <laughs> but when it get quiet, oh, my goodness, I'm about to scorch some earth. Ooh. Hey, I was flaming people yesterday. I had one client come in. I was running behind by two minutes. He was like, hey, bruh, look, Spider-Man come out today, which I told one of my clients. I said, nah, man, it come out tomorrow. The very next client got in the chair and was like, look, well, two clients later, got in the chair and was like, look, man, Spider-Man come out today. I'm going to watch it. I got to be there by three. I'm like, bruh, your appointment is over at three. He was like, I know. He said, I don't mind if I miss my, I miss the opening credits. <laughs> I said, don't worry, I got you covered. Uh huh. So, I say that to miss, miss, because I misspoke yesterday. I misspoke yesterday. I told somebody, I said, hey, the movie don't come out till tomorrow. He was like, no, I think it come out today. I said, hold on. And I talked to my assistant, and she was like, hey, it do it come out tomorrow on with Shaw. And I feel like, you know, she was with me. She was with me. So I expect her to say what I expected to say. She agreed with me. She my assistant. But she was wrong. <laughs> my next client said, yeah, they're doing early showings. And he wanted them people who get tickets. He the, the subscription ticketer. So he, made, he make it the airy movie. Yep. So he went yesterday. So I guess what I'm saying is I misspoke and found out in that day. What I'm saying is my facts get checked same day, just that way. And what I found is hey, my assistant can lead me wrong. I don't know what I'm going to do about that. He really can't. Can't. I mean, they, I can't discipline her. What, I'm going to move to another assistant? No. <laughs> that means she's the only assistant there is for me. She works so well, normally. And I'm glad to know she sided with me. Yep, yep. Made me look good, like I knew it all. And now I'm out here um, eating my words, <laughs> repeating my words. There it is. Hey, yeah, receipting my words. Receipt, show me a receipt. Oh, uh, I got some stuff I wanna talk about, but I can't, but I can a little bit. I went and bought something and I had to return it yesterday because I no longer need it. Yep. Kind of a good thing and a bad thing, really a sad thing, kind of a mad thing, depending on who you are in my family. But we'll leave it right there. I'll tell you after Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Can't talk about everything. And this is one of them times where I'm figuring it out. Hey, uh, it's like three weeks, coming soon. Oh yeah. January 2nd, the theaters near you. That's it, maybe true. Yep. So, um, 
what else do we talk about? We're kind of here. I got to hurry up and get to the pool because I still got to get to the pool today and I got to go to work today. I got to fix schedule. Out here having fun in this creek though. I'm uh, out here having fun in the woods. And that was crazy seeing that dog. I just had that happen a couple times. One time, it was in my yard. Dog was running at me. I reached down to pick up a stick. I turned around and the dog was gone. I thought I was seeing things. I'm like, where the heck did this dog go? He was just running in my direction like he wanted something. He wasn't barking. He just started running at me like he wanted to, like, he looked like the dog that wasn't about to bark. He was just coming to get some, it looked like. <laughs> and I reached down to pick up a stick. And when I looked up, that boy was gone. I'm like, where the heck did this dog go? That's kind of how I felt about that dog. But I saw which direction he went. But he ain't bark, he ain't do nothing. He just went back, I guess, in the direction of his owner. I wonder if he let his owner know, hey, it's another person out here. Like, where, girl? Take me to him. That's why you don't bark. It's like when you bark, that's when you, when your dog barks, that's no, when you know it's talking to you, right? Uh, I'm still looking to get a dog, yeah. I just decided the best time to get a dog is after I get my finances in order. Yep. I learned that from these ducks. These ducks have actually set back my financial uh, plans. I did not expect that. But I ain't gonna lie, I kind of like taking care of them a little bit now, especially. A little bit more now that they're in a cage. So, this was not what I expected. I did not expect to gain another pet. But I will say, I'm starting to learn them. I feel like they meant to be here, especially with as many eggs as they're producing. These things are not supposed to make this many eggs. I think everybody knows that. They're not supposed to lay, a, lay an egg every day. They're supposed to lay like, like not even 200 eggs. I'm saying I feel like we didn't got over 200 eggs already. <clears throat> and this is their first year. Heck, they'll be a year old in March of next year. Anyway, we at the end, yeah. I would do it again, yeah, but like I said, this is last call. Yep. Hey, this is starting to be so much fun to me. Hey, I wanted to let y'all know, like I said yesterday, the budget, every day, I'm working on getting something right. Getting something right, identifying something. Because next year, and this ain't a New Year's resolution, I feel like we already starting. I'm already plugging in next year's budget now. And what I'm doing this for is because I want to make sure this is not because of New Year's resolution. What I'm saying is, I want my 12 month history to always be as good as possible so i can overlap it and see where my changes are i'm saying there is an uh, there is a pattern in your life normally and if it's not you should work towards getting towards one the faster you can identify patterns the faster you can see things that are off in your life i'm saying if you get up and you check your account every day if you get up and you check on your kids or your whatever every day <clears throat> the faster you can identify things that are inconsistent in your life and hey, that's important y'all much respect, y'all. Much love. Hey, this your boy. And I'm out.